Hey guys, so welcome back to my channel. Um, if you have been here before, if you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Quinta and I carry no titles except servant of the Most High God. Um, and I just want to share with you guys what the Lord has been telling me to tell his people and share with his people. Um, so before we get started, Holy Spirit, move how you choose, do what you want, say what you want, open the mouths of your, open the eyes of your people, open the ears of your people, Lord, and open the mouths of your servants, Lord, and put your words into them in the name of Jesus, without fear, with courage and boldness of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, so there's a couple things I want to share with you guys today that the Holy Spirit has been telling me and I have been holding off on putting out this video for a little bit simply because I did not <laughs> I did not want to like turn on the camera and do the whole bit but I was led to turn on the camera sit in front of you guys read the scripture because I have my backing oh I have my backing oh and my backing is the word of God so um, the first thing that I want to share with you guys, you guys have probably heard me say in other videos that, um, that the Lord is speaking now about things that are not written in scripture. And some people, it might confuse some people who may not be able to discern, who may not be able to go beyond just hearing a video or hearing somebody say something, um, it might be, you know, challenging for some people to go to the Holy Spirit and ask him questions about what somebody said. Um, but I want to tell you, disclaimer, do not take my word for anything. Always check with the Holy Spirit about what's being said. Now, the Holy Spirit is different from your flesh every time. Whatever the Holy Spirit says is not going to be the same thing that your flesh would say, okay? Because this flesh that we live in is in opposition to the word of the Lord and the voice of God all day long, no matter what people tell you or how we feel about things, our flesh is never going to agree with God because it was, it was designed that way from the fall of Adam. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> let me start with, <clears throat> excuse me. Let me start with what I was saying about, scripture and how God is revealing some things that aren't expressly in the Bible. So <clears throat> in Revelation 17, doo -doo 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 -doo. Revelation chapter 17 in verse three, and he carried Okay, let's start, start at verse two. With whom the kings of the earth have committed sexual immorality and with the wine of whose sexual immorality. Let's start at verse one. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said to me, come, I will show you the judgment of the great prostitute who is seated on many waters. With whom the kings of the earth have committed sexual immorality and with the wine of whose sexual immorality, the, the dwellers on earth have become drunk. And he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was full of blasphemous names. And it had seven heads, the beast, and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and jewels and pearls, holding in her hand a golden cup of abominations and the impurities of her sexual immorality. And on her forehead was written a name of mystery. Babylon the Great, mother of prostitutes and of earth's abominations. And so if you have been, if God has shared with you who Mystery Babylon is, uh, Mystery Babylon is actually the nation of America. Um, and you can ask the Holy Spirit about this. So God has revealed that to me personally. Um, I know that he's also revealed that fact to other prophets and um, servants of the Most High in general as well. Um, but so in the scripture, it does not say America, right? There's nobody's name specifically expressed as this whore or prostitute described in Revelation 17, right? It does not say 
um, on her forehead was written a name of mystery, America, right? However, God is using some of his prophets now to reveal who this person, who this woman is that this angel is talking about in Revelation 17. Now, that word is not written in scripture. However, God said in Joel 2 that in those days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young man shall dream dreams. So we are in the those days that Joel was talking about. Um, we're in those days now. So what's happening now is there are a lot of people that God is spiritually awakening. And so what's happening is they're beginning to prophesy about things that were mysteries when they were originally written in the Bible. These are things that were originally mysteries in the Bible, but now God is revealing what they are. And so there are also events in scripture, even in Revelation, um, well, I would say Matthew through Revelation that are not expressly names, right? So there are lots of kingdoms that are named um, in scripture, the kingdom of this or, um, you know, which some of these now we, these, they're coming out now that God is revealing them to people in dreams and visions and with, and with prophetic words um, that some of these country countries are, you know, Russia and, but they're not expressly named Russia in the Bible. Do you understand what I'm saying? So people like to call people false teachers and false doctrine. Be very careful about that. Be, be careful that um, you have the Holy Spirit when you're making those um, accusations. Because God is, in fact, using people now to um, reveal mysteries that were, that were written in the Bible but not expressly named. So now he's sending his servants to expressly name people things that were not expressly named or written in the original scripture. So now God is revealing these things and people want to call these people that, that God is using to reveal these exact names um, false, but it's not true. So what they're doing is calling good evil. Um, and usually in those people's lives, you can find them calling evil good as well, um, because you would be able to perceive in the spirit, like even if you don't understand why this person is saying mystery Babylon is America, mystery Babylon is America. You could always ask the Holy Spirit, like, Lord, is Mr. Babylon America? And he would tell you, indeed, um, and then send you to scripture or however the Lord sees fit. But just be very careful. So when I make that statement, I'm not telling people to be false and just, you know, that God is just, you know, out here doing. I'm saying that there's a method to everything that God does, whether he explains it to us or not. And that there are people that God is using in this hour to reveal the mysteries that were written long ago in the scriptures so so god is revealing a lot of things that were not expressly written in the scripture he may have mentioned it in scripture he made a he might have named it in scripture but it's not expressly the word is not exp expressly named in the scripture right um so basically what God is doing is fulfilling his own scripture now the people that live in these times that were written about in revelation oh so long ago they're being able to understand now who they are we're, because we're in these times so these times are being that were written about a long ago we're living them now so now god is telling us oh, this is exactly the country this is exactly the person this is exactly the name this is exactly the nation so that's what's happening now and i wanted to um express and explain that to you guys so that you guys don't get caught up in um grieving the holy spirit or even quenching the holy spirit um so make sure that you're very careful about this, that just because you don't understand it yet um but god is absolutely pouring out his spirit and revealing more of his mysteries that were written about oh so long ago even in the book of daniel there's a lot of things that aren't expressly named um but those places would be called something else now at the times that they're supposed to come to pass and manifest um so make sure you check with the Holy Spirit about everything before you start talking. Um, so e Ezekiel is where I'm coming out of today. And the Lord was telling me that the strength of the prophet is to match the rebellion of the people that God is sending them to. Excuse me. So the servant of the Lord seems harsh and unwavering. And so what God was saying was, that's why they don't like you. That's why they don't like your delivery. Um, because the servant of the Lord is going to match the rebellion of the people. And then I'm going to show you in scripture where God actually did that. 
Um, so you don't have to take my word for it. Like, oh, she's just saying that because this is the way she delivers messages and she wants everybody to accept it. No, I want you to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And may he um, allow you to accept his truth, the full truth and nothing but the truth. Um, and may you be freed in your mind and no longer oppressed demonically in Jesus name. Um, but the strength of the prophet is to match the rebellion of the people that God is sending them to. So that prophet will usually seem very harsh and unwavering and rude. And I didn't like her delivery. I didn't like his delivery. I didn't like the way he said it. But honey, I'm about to show you who the real true and living God is, right? And it says, he went, in, went on to share that their hearts are really against the one, capital O, sending you, which is God. So they will certainly talk against you. Um, also, God will continue to send his servant to warn the people of false doctrines and teachings and coming judgment so that the people are not deceived. This is important to the father because people always ask, why do you have to warn people about these false doctrines and prophets? Because first of all, that is a crazy question to me because most people are always asking questions to other people anyway well what do you think about the coming year well, what did the lord tell you about 2024 prophet well what you know what do you think about this situation prophet what did woman of god what do you think ask the holy spirit people ask questions they ask very facetious questions and very like skeptical questions out of their they're telling on themselves they're telling that they have no discernment they're revealing the fact that they have no perception in the spirit and no discern discernment. They're trying to come for you by asking you questions. They're trying to trip you up. No different than they did Jesus back in the day. No different than the Sanhedrin who were the religious ones. No different than what they did to Jesus back in the day when they wanted to trip him up and they wanted to try to catch him in a lie or make him stumble on what he had already said. Um, these people nowadays in the comment section are no different. They're going to continue to be that way until the end of time. Um, but God said that he sends people, his people, his servants to warn the people of false doctrines and teachings so that his true remnant are not deceived. Because what happens is God will reveal something to the true, the people, everybody, the wheat and the tear, the sheep and the goats. God will reveal it to everybody, right? But only those who have his spirit will grab it and be like, okay, this is from my daddy. Let me listen, pay attention. Let me get on top of this because this is from my daddy, right? Let me take heed to what's being said because he tells me his word because I read his word. I know it. I receive it that even though it, it's not really, I'm not, it's not really meshing with my flesh right now because maybe she was too loud or maybe she was too quiet when she revealed it. Um, the Holy Spirit is ministering to me as this person is talking. And so one, he's doing it so that his sheep are not deceived. So there are going to be some who will be like, oh, no, this isn't God. God didn't say this, blah, blah, blah. Then there are going to be others who are like, okay, Lord, I'm taking heed. Is this from you? This word is from me, daughter or son. Okay, Father, how do I move forward? How do I proceed after this? Um whether they take heed or not, or receive the word of the Lord or not, they have been warned. So their blood is now their responsibility. So I'm going to read Ezekiel to you guys. And he said to me, son of man, stand on your feet and I will speak with you. And as he spoke to me, the spirit entered into me and set me on my feet and I heard him speaking to me. And he said to me, son of man, I send you to the people of Israel, to, to nations of rebels, who have rebelled against me, they and their fathers have transgressed against me this very day. Um, so he's telling him, like, I'm sending you to a rebellious nation. These are my people. These are my chosen people, but they are extremely rebellious. But I'm sending you anyway as the prophet. I'm sending you with the word of warning anyway, even though I'm telling you ahead of time that they are rebellious, right? Like, that's of no consequence to you because all you have to do is whatever God says. That's it. Um, let me see. And he says in verse five, and whether they hear, this is exactly what I was just saying, even though I wasn't reading this scripture and I don't remember reading it, but this is what, what I just read to you was what God said to me. But now I'm reading verse five and whether they hear or refuse to hear for they are a rebellious house. 
they will know that a prophet has been among them. And you, son of man, be not afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words, their threats, their accusations, them calling you false, them calling you names, them saying things about you. And you, son of man, be not afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns are with you and you sit on scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks or their faces, for they are a rebellious house. And you shall speak my words to them, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house. This is the God Almighty, the only true and living God speaking right now. But you, son of man, hear what I say to you. Be not rebellious like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. So when the word of the Lord comes to us, people of God, and you don't have forget about being a prophet, teacher, preacher. These things are for the body of Christ. These things, these, these gifts and these offices are for the body, the body of Christ to edify and build up and equip the saints. That is the purpose of them. Having a gift and having an office in the body of Christ, you guys, does not edify the person who carries that office. We get our strength from the secret place. We get our strength from time in the presence of the Almighty God. Because when you read to the end of Revelation 17, the scripture says that the Lamb and those with Him shall overcome them. Those with Him, the Bible says, who are called, chosen, and faithful. It doesn't say those who are pastor, prophet, teacher, preacher, or evangelist. Because at the end of it all, you have where if God has called you to an office or a ministry, we have to maintain our faithfulness to Him, our calling to Him, and our choice to Him first. And then we can be a pastor, prophet, preacher, teacher, whatever else He's called us to do. Do you understand? There's a difference. We have to make sure that we minister to the Lord as well as to the people. We cannot start to mix the two. Because when you mix the two, you can get caught out there ministering to the people, forget to minister to the Lord, which is how a lot of pastors and things are going to be left here to suffer through the wrath of God. Because a lot of people will abandon their first love. A lot of people will abandon their first altar, which is to the living God. <laughs> we can't forget who called us. You know, we go into ministry, we be running. Oh, the Lord called me to be a prophet. I'm going to teach, tell the word of the Lord to all the people and blah, blah, blah. But where, what about your prayer altar? Is it dry? What about your time in the secret place with the most high God? Is that dry? We have to make sure that we stay with our first love. There's a scripture in Revelation, either one, two, or three, that talks about the, se the seven churches. And one of the church's commandments is that, and their, God's issues with them is that they forgot, their, they had abandoned their first love, which was him. So they were on fire. They were teaching the gospel. They were ministering to people. They were reaching people. They were out in the streets in the heat showing that, listen, this gospel, da, 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 da. But how are you going to preach the gospel and then you yourself be a castaway? We have to be very careful about making sure that our, our ministering to the Lord and the ministry he's called us to are separate. But they both come and flow from time with him, you know? Um, I know I'm teaching to somebody because this is all the Holy Spirit. I got notes, but what I just said won't end them. So, <clears throat> um, and then in uh, chapter three, let's see. And he said to me, "Son of man, eat what." Ever you find here eat this scroll and go speak to the house of Israel so I opened my mouth and he gave me the scroll to eat and he said to me son of man feed your belly with this scroll that I give you and fill your stomach with it now as a teacher I want to really go into depth about what he's saying about eating the scroll and all the things but maybe another time um, then I ate it and it was in my mouth as sweet as honey um, da -da 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 -da. For you are not sent to a people of foreign speech and a hard language, but to the people of Israel. So he's saying, these are the people that you know that you speak the same language as them, right? So these are people that you are from. These are people you know their habits, you know their religious ways, what they like to do, their religious customs, all of that. 
not to many people of foreign speech in a hard language whose words you cannot understand. Surely I sent you to such. Surely if I sent you to such, they would listen to you. So he was saying, I could have sent you to a people and made this so much easier for you, the prophet. But he said, I'm sending you to your own people who will not receive what a word you say. Except by my spirit. Um, but the house of Israel will not be willing to listen to you for they are not willing to listen to me. That's why we shouldn't take when people don't receive the word of the Lord from us personal because it's not about us. They're not listening. They don't listen to God. They rebel against God in general. So before you ever come with a word in your mouth of warning or judgment or whatever it is that you want to tell the people, this is coming down the line, you know, prepare for a storm. And meanwhile, they're just listening to you talk. Oh, yeah. OK, prepare for a storm. There's no study going on after the message of, OK, Lord, how do I prepare for a storm your way? What exactly are you wanting me to prepare for exactly? They just listen to the message and go on. But the house of Israel will not be willing to listen to you, for they are not willing to listen to me. Because all the house of Israel have a hard forehead and a, forehead and a stubborn heart. Behold, I have made your face as hard as their faces, and your forehead as hard as their forehead. Like emery harder than flint, have I made your forehead. Fear them not, nor be dismayed at their looks, for they are a rebellious house. And so I'm going to stop there. So the word that I gave you guys in the beginning was the strength of the prophet is usually based on the rebellion of the people. Um, and so it seems like the prophet is hard or harsh or giving you a word of correction or, all the time. But it's because people need to be corrected a lot. Do you see how many times in the Old Testament, y'all, that the children of Israel disobeyed and rebelled against God and fell into idolatry 50 billion times all throughout the Old Testament God is constantly talking about a rebellious people that he loves but he keeps having to send a prophet and there's so many of them because his people are so rebellious so be very careful when you say oh here she come with another word of the Lord again God always talking to her and, and she always coming with a word of the Lord or he always coming with a word of the Lord number one God is always talking and just because you can't hear him doesn't mean he's not speaking to somebody who will listen. Glory to God. And there's no shade to anybody. Hear me with the Holy Spirit. Number two, God is going to continue to warn his people until his son comes. Because that is the type of God that he is. Merciful and righteous. He's a righteous judge. And judgment does not always mean a bad verdict. A judgment is God's final decision about something. That's what a judgment is. So a judgment can also be a good one that rules in someone's favor. Or a judgment could be a bad one that rules in someone's favor who does not obey the word of the Lord. So take even that to the Holy Spirit. I'm going to ask him how that relates to you. So <clears throat> God wanted me to share about rebellion and the way that we respond to the word of the Lord and God's going to continue to use prophets, preachers, teachers, intercessors, whoever he wants to, to declare the word of the Lord. Everybody's not going to be a prophet by office that comes with the word of the Lord from God. Everybody's not going to be a prophet. Uh, 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 God is using who he wants to in this hour and we better receive the word of the Lord from whoever brings it as long as it's from Yahweh, period. Be blessed, people of God. Love you guys.